so yeah, we got off track a bit there, but uh, the, the short version of uh, the wrestling war you dealt with, that was very messy, I guess. Yeah, it was really horrible. What they were doing now, I don't know if you've seen this very recently, I don't, they must have done this in 79, but somehow it's, it's not been seen for 30 years. And I just saw it about 10 days ago myself. It's on the internet now. Uh, it's a segment with all five of those guys, uh, with uh, Bob Roop, uh, Ronnie Garvin, Bob Orton Jr., uh, Boris Malenko, and Ron Wright, the five guys that were part of my crew that wanted to try to take the territory. And after they couldn't take the territory, uh, they did an interview in which they just basically said, "This is here's the business. It's all it's all bullshit," you know. I mean, it was they it was I've never seen anything as bad as this thing. I watched it the other day. Everybody that's seen it, they want me to mind prayer. What do you think? You know, well, I wasn't really surprised. I was surprised that they didn't really show it back in 79. I don't know how it got buried for all these years, but uh, that's a pretty amazing piece of film there. And then they talk about after they do the first one on the fact that every match I've ever had, uh, they knew who the winner was going to be. And there was all, you know, it's never had a real wrestling match in the history of wrestling. That's basically what they're saying. And they each one came out and said, I never had a real match. I never had a real match. And they all did the same thing. And then the Rube comes on at the end and says, uh, this isn't the end. He said, this is just the beginning. We're going to talk about the homosexuals in wrestling. We're going to talk about the, the blood, how you get the blood. We're going to talk about, I mean, it was like, God, What gosh. was that aired on? Huh? Where, where did that air uh, at it's right now it's it's out there on uh it's on youtube i'm sure it's on youtube by but, now and but did it get out initially was it ever no, released no okay, it wasn't released no yet. it wasn't ever released yeah. i'd never 2020 seen 20 didn't have that for the well oh, good for wrestling oh. but yeah yeah and you got all five of those guys one at a time come on the camera and then oh, wow. say the same thing and uh you know i was like I couldn't believe it. I just was like amazed at how in the hell, man. And I couldn't figure out. They did everything in that wrestling war that 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 was horrible. They it's just ridiculous what they did. But I was really surprised when I saw this that they didn't do that when they were, had their last television show when they were closing down. I'm surprised they didn't put that on there and just. Go ahead and kill it. Just, just kill it. What they basically did in that wrestling war is, Knoxville was dead for five years. Uh, it took me five years to build it, and we started in a little dinky building with probably a thousand people, and we end up uh, wrestling in a coliseum with nine or ten thousand, and uh, filling it up every week. Uh, wrestling was tremendously hot there, and. Uh, they murdered it so badly. When I sold it to Jim Barnett, uh, he could never draw money in there. He sold it to uh, to uh, Ric Flair. He sold it to Crockett. Crockett sold it to Ric Flair and uh, Blackjack Mulligan. No one could go in there and draw money again. Uh, we went to Pensacola. I sold it. I went to Pensacola in 1979. In 1985, I had Southeastern down there in Pensacola was doing big business, and I changed the name to Continental, and we went back to Knoxville. Uh, first night we went back, I took everybody that had been stars in the, in the 70s there. My brother, Jimmy, Rob, uh, Barb Armstrong, uh, Stomper, uh, just a fabulous card, and uh, sold out to Coliseum again. First night, uh, we went in there for years and just, it's like we never left. So for the war itself, you mentioned you had to get Dick Slater, who has a reputation of probably being one of the top five toughest wrestlers that people talk about. Why did you need to get, surround yourself with some of the toughest guys? Was there outside of the ring stuff going on during Oh the yeah, there were all kinds of things going on. I mean, it's just, it happened to be that Dick was there. He was there before it started. Okay. He was there, probably came in about three months before all this started. And then, uh, and when that happens, guys don't want to stay, you know, because you can't, you're not going to draw money in a, in a war, you know, it's just not going to happen. Uh, that, that, but it did happen in Atlanta, in Atlanta's situation, because they both had those television programs back to back, they wrestled in the same building, one on a Friday, one on a Saturday, they were able to maintain big business that's 
most unusual in a wrestling war. Uh, in the case of Knoxville, it was not the same classy type of uh, opposition. It was, you know, one one group wants to just destroy it. If I can't own it, I want to destroy it. It was kind of like their thought process. I see. What was the worst situation uh, you encountered during that war? Uh, I never had any physical altercations. Uh, uh, I kept. I always kept a low profile as a wrestling promoter. I did not want to, to people to know that I ran the company. I didn't think that that was important, uh, and I didn't think it would benefit me for them to to know that I was the guy that owned these companies. So, uh, you know, I I wasn't hanging out, but I had wrestlers wrestling for me, and they were hanging out the same clubs with the wrestlers who was wrestling for the other company. And the other company, they were, they were, there were nights when I heard of things that they were getting close to having problems with each other. Uh, that never happened in the Georgia War either. What would happen if Bob Roop walked into the room right now? Ah, uh, man, I don't know. You know, I have forgiven all those guys except for Roop. I have never seen Roop since. Uh, uh, I don't know. You know, I. I I really think that a lot of that war was Roop. Uh, a lot of those guys, all of those guys, had in fact had worked for me for years and never had a problem with any of them. And uh, Bob Roop came in uh, in February, uh, put him in as a booker, and this crap all starts in four months, three or four months later. And I believe, you know, he's the guy that instigated it, all of it. and. Uh, you know, I don't have I don't have good feelings about him, but I don't like to carry grudges, and I don't think the good Lord wants us to to not forgive people. And you know, and probably if I saw him face to face, uh, pro it's been a long time. Which it probably will sooner or later, because I know he's at the WrestleMania conventions this year, and you're probably going to be doing more and more of those. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be running. In fact, I think we're both on one in Charlotte, one coming up in oh, Charlotte in August, in August yeah. and uh, we're both for the same company. Maybe they could have a wrestling match between you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Get it all out of the uh, system for good. Yeah.